Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we will be continuing with the final part four of our stylized bus sculpt. In part one, we began by sculpting a rough skull and body. In part two, we added in the eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. In part three, we sculpted some stylized blocky hair. And then in this part four, we'll do some vertex painting and simple lighting to finish things off. I have uploaded a couple of reference images to my Dropbox. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, picking up where we left off, we added some base color to the eyes and skin, but let's now enhance it a bit by using the vertex paint feature and ambient occlusion node. To start, I'm going to take my cursor up to the top left corner here until it turns into a little crosshair, and then left click and pull to open up a new menu. Now in the top left corner, there's a drop down menu that gives you the type of window. Here I will select shader editor and then pressing N to hide the options panel. Let's select the hair on the head, then click new over in the material panel on the right. With the hair on the head still selected, let's now switch to vertex paint mode. If you go over to the object data properties tab on the right, you'll see under the vertex colors area that there is now a vertex color group called cull. This is automatically created for the object you have selected when you switch to vertex paint mode. Now over in the shader editor, shift A and search for the vertex color node. Now you can click in the field here in the node and select the cull vertex color group. Then connect it up to the base color of the principled BSDF. Now up here with the draw brush selected, pick the color of your character's hair. Then under this paint menu, select set vertex colors or press shift K as the shortcut. This will effectively flood fill your selected object with the color you picked. Now to quickly enhance the color a bit, let's add in an ambient occlusion node. This will give you some subtle shadows automatically without having to paint them in. Shift A and search for ambient occlusion node or just select it as it's usually the top one in the search menu. Then shift A again and search for the color ramp node. This node allows you to control the intensity of nodes, a very handy commonly used node. Connect the color up to the factor. Now I want to mix the base brown color with the subtle shadows of the ambient occlusion node. To do this, shift A and search for a mix RGB node. Connect the vertex color up to color one of the mix RGB node and the color ramp up to color two. Now it looks a little bit weird since the two are mixing quite harshly. To fix this, you can change the blend mode of the mix RGB node from mix to multiply. This effectively overlays the ambient occlusion node over the base color, giving a nicer effect. As you pull the left slider of the color ramp node over to the right, you'll notice that the intensity of the ambient occlusion increases. It is subtle right now, but if you increase the factor slider of the mix RGB node to the right, you'll see the effect more clearly. So it looks good for me. Now let's switch to object mode and then assign the hair material to the eyebrows. You'll see the eyebrows are black and that's because the vertex color group hasn't been created for the eyebrows. As you can see on the far right panel, there's nothing there. When we switch to vertex paint mode, however, with the eyebrows actively selected, you'll notice the vertex color group cull is automatically created for the eyebrows. Now just set the color of the vertex color group by pressing the shortcut shift K again. Now just rinse and repeat for the beard and eyelashes. Now let's do the same thing for the skin. With the eyelashes selected, I'm just going to copy the nodes we just made in the shader editor, then select the bust, and then paste the nodes in the shader editor for the skin. Before I link up the nodes to the principal BSDF node, however, I'm going to click the base color field and copy the hex code of the skin color I picked earlier, as I quite like it. Then connect up the nodes to the base color. Switch to vertex paint mode and then set the color for the vertex paintbrush by pasting the hex value in the color swatch. Then press shift K to flood fill. 
Now I'm going to adjust the sliders of the color ramp and the mix RGB node to get a more subtle effect than what I have for the hair. Okay, let's move on to the painting part, but before we do, let's set up some simple lighting so that when we paint, we can see it under conditions closer to the final render. First off, I'm going to shift A and add in a empty plane axis. This will act as the focus point for the lights we're about to add. Now with the focus point empty still actively selected, go up to the add menu, down to light, and select three point lights. This option will be made available to you through the built-in Blender add-on called Tri Lights. You can enable it up in the Edit Preferences menu if you haven't already. This creates three lights for you, a main key light, a supporting fill light, and a backlight, all with a focus on the actively selected object at the time they are added. It's a little dark and that's because the model is quite large and the power of the lights is comparatively quite low. To fix this, select the key light and over to the right side panel, increase the power to your liking. Very generally, you want your fill and backlights to be half of the power of the key light, but depending on the look you want, you can obviously play around with these. The shadows are quite harsh right now, which I don't particularly want. To soften the shadows, increase the size parameter of the lights. You can move the lights around as well to influence the lighting and shadows. You can also select the focus point empty that we just created and move it around and the lights will point towards wherever you move it. Okay, so now into the painting of the skin. Select the bust and switch to vertex paint mode. Then over in the tool settings panel on the right, I'm going to scroll down to the color palette area and click new. Then click the plus sign to add the base skin color we have. We will make use of this later. Now to make the skin look a little bit more interesting, I'm going to change the color to a slight reddish color. Down to the fall off section, I'm going to select custom and then pull the shape into a flat shape like this. This softens the brush's edges, then down to symmetry and turning on eximetry. If you're using a tablet, make sure to have the pen pressure option selected if it isn't already. Mine was off for some reason. And now we can get to painting. I'm going to roughly paint in some red along the middle third of the face, around the nose, eyes, and ears. Don't forget to add this color to your color palette in case you need it later. Now switching to a subtle yellow and painting the forehead and top of the cheekbones or wherever else bone might be closer to the skin for your character. Then switching to a purpley blue to give a stubble look around the bottom jaw. Now for the lips, I'm going to switch to a darker version of my skin color and then mixing it in with the red from earlier as well. Don't really love that, so we'll do some cleanup later. Now with some of that roughed in, I'm going to switch back to the base skin color we saved before and go over the whole face to soften things up. Okay, that's good for now, so we'll do some cleanup later. Now, if you want to get a little fancy and add in some roughness or shininess to the sculpt, you can go over to the Object Data Properties tab, and under the Vertex Colors area, click on the little plus sign to add a new vertex color group. I'll rename this Rough. 
then click on the little camera icon beside it to make it the active vertex color group. Now over in the shader editor, shift A and search for the vertex color node again. Pick the new rough vertex color group in the field there and then connect it up to the roughness input of the principled BSDF. Now our guy looks quite nervous and that's because roughness works on a grayscale. White is flat and black is shiny. The default color for this vertex color is dark gray it seems. So he's looking pretty sweaty. To dampen this up a bit, go up to the color swatch and pick something very white. And then press shift K to flood fill the vertex color group. Now you'll see it looks a lot less shiny and a little bit more like regular skin. Now to shine up some parts of the face where you might see some of the skin being maybe a little bit more greasy. Let's pick a darkish gray and paint over the tip of the nose, the eyes, and the lips. If something looks too shiny, you can go back over it with a lighter gray. If you want to get even fancier and add in some subtle wrinkles and pores, you can add in another vertex color group as we did before. I'll name this one Bump, and then click the little camera icon. Then over in the shader editor, shift A and search for the attribute node. Type the name of the new Bump vertex color group in the field. Shift A and add in a bump node now. Connect them up and then connect the bump to the normal input of the principal BSDF. Bump works in grayscale as well. White gives height and black gives depth. It looks kind of gnarly at first. To fix this, let's flood fill the vertex color group with a white to make everything more uniform. To do some pores, let's pick a dark gray color and then over in the tool settings, scroll down to the stroke section and increase the spacing to something like 200% and the jitter to something like two. This will make the brush behave a little bit more haphazardly. Now when I go to paint, you can see what look like holes or pores randomly creating as I move my brush. They are a little bit on the intense side, so to reduce this, reduce the strength slider in the bump node over in the shader editor. Now just wave your brush all over the face to give the subtle appearance of pores on the skin. Now for some wrinkles, I'm gonna turn the spacing back to 1% and the jitter to zero. Switching to solid view, I'm going to paint in some wrinkles all over the face with a dark gray color.
And finally, just some minor cleanup and details. For the beard shadow, I'm going to go back in and lay down some more bluish purpley color. Then soften the edges with the soften brush. Then go back over it with my skin base color. Same method as before. And then for the lips, more red color overlaid with the base skin color and then the soften brush to give them a little more color as they are looking kind of flat. And then finally with some brown and red and X symmetry off, I'm going to lay down some random dots around the face to emulate some subtle moles and pimples. So there you have it. One way to sculpt a stylized bust. I hope this series helped you out at least a little bit. In the next series, I'm going to do a stylized male base mesh this time and then kind of transition into probably a kind of an adventurer or Link type character. Hit me up on social media somewhere and show me what you ended up with. I love seeing your guys' creations. I love seeing your guys' creations and artwork. I have a little Facebook group going now too, which makes sharing and asking questions a little bit easier. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped and see you in the next one.